Christ's work is our work, October 19th. Jesus came to do his Father's work. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 2. The example of the Savior should inspire us to put forth earnest, self-sacrificing effort for the good of others. He came to this world as the unwearied servant of man's necessity. Love for the lost race was manifested in all that he said and did. He clothed his divinity with humanity, that he might stand among human beings as one of them, a sharer of their poverty and their griefs. What a busy life he led! Day by day he might be seen entering the humble abodes of want and sorrow, speaking hope to the downcast and peace to the distressed. This is the work that he asks his people to do today. Humble, gracious, tender-hearted, pitiful, he went about doing good, lifting up the bowed down and comforting the sorrowful. None who came to him went away unhelped. To all he brought hope and gladness. The opportunities that he has given us, the promises that he has made, the privileges that he has bestowed, should inspire us with far greater zeal and devotion. Every addition to the church should be one more agency for the carrying out of the plan of redemption. Every power of God's people should be devoted to bringing many sons and daughters to him. In our service there is to be no indifference, no selfishness. Any departure from self-denial, any relaxation of earnest effort, means so much power given to the enemy. Testimonies for the Church 7-221 with such an army of workers as our youth, how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. Counsels to parents, teachers, and students, 555. 